Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCNP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering interconnected Cisco networking devices part one, ICND1, exam number 10105. Now we're moving on to section 1.2, compare and contrast TCP and UDP protocols. Now role of transport layer. The transport layer is responsible for establishing a temporary communication session between two application and delivering data between them. TCP uses two protocols to achieve this. So we have transmission control protocol or TCP for short, which is reliable protocol and user datagram protocol UDP, which is the best effort delivery. These are responsibilities of the transport layer. So transport layer, what is going to do, for example, let's, let's just write it here. So the job of the transport layer is, for example, just if you imagine this is uh, our data, yeah, that's coming from application layer. Now, as this data hits the transport layer, both for OSI and TCP IP model, the transport layer, what it's going to do, the first thing is going to segment it. It's going to take this data and it's going to chop it in pieces, right? So we have nine segments here. Now, at both transport TCP and UTP do the segmenting. So we have segment. segment here this is a segment data from manageability and reassembled segment data into streams of application data at the destination tcp for example it will sequence each segment as well so you say okay that's a sequence numbers as we have here right so this sequence they serve as a role for the destination to be able to reassemble them the way they were sent because maybe sometimes you will have a sequence that arrives out of order you know, they, you, you send the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but maybe number 3 comes late, or number 2 comes after number, uh, number 3, or number 4, and so on. So the transport layer has a sequence, so you put them in the correct order before it gives it to the application layer. The transport, the transport layer will do the tracking, and it does this by using the port number, source port number and destination port number and it will identify the proper application for each communication stream, which we're going to talk a bit more about the port numbers and so on. Conversation segmenting, segmentation and multiplexing. So segmenting the data enables many different communications from many different users to be interleaved or multiplexed on the same network at the same time. So for example, if you, if you think when you open a web browser or when you open, when you access the internet, you don't do one thing. You may be opening three or four web browsers. Maybe you open in YouTube, same time, sending emails, watching a movie or something like that. That it, the transport layer makes all that possible because it's going to segment. It's going to make them into small pieces and it's going to, because they are small pieces, they, you, then you can multiplex it. So segmentation allows conversation multiplexing multiple applications can use the network at the same time error checking can be performed on the data in the segment to check if the segment was changed during transit so we do we can have error checking as well on on the transport layer so transport layer reliability different applications have different transport reliability requirements so tcp ip like we said provides two transport layer protocols tcp and udp TCP is reliable, while UDP is the best effort delivery. As you can see here on the screen on the right, we have some protocols like FTP, HTTP, SMTP that require a TCP, while DNS, TFTP require UDP. DNS sometimes requires TCP as well. So TCP provides a reliable delivery, ensuring, the data, ensuring that all of the data arrives at the destination, uses acknowledgement delivery and other processes to ensure delivery makes larger demands on the network because you have a bigger overhead. While UDP provides just basic functions for delivery, no reliability there, and less overhead because it's called a smaller header. We're gonna see the header side by side anyway. So here we see both of the headers. So for example, TCP was defined in RFC 793. It is connection oriented, creates a session between the source and destination. So what we mean here, for example, just if you imagine here, we have a PC here communicating with this server, or say, imagine a web server. Now this PC, before it's actually going to start sending data, is going to make a connection oriented by saying, excuse me, are you there? Are you able to receive the data? 
Reliable delivery, meaning that we're going to send it some data, we're going to send the segments, and at one point, we're going to acknowledge those segments. So if I send, for example, say uh, three segments, and then I'll wait for acknowledgement that you, uh, then I'll wait for acknowledgement that you receive the segments. Order data reconstruction, like I said, if we send sequence, for example, we send one, two, three, and at the destination arrives three, two, one. Now that's out of order delivery. So at the destination, it will keep this in the memory until it gets all the segments and it will, it will reorder them. Flow control, for example, that we can agree to send so many segments, say that we agree to send 10 segments and then acknowledgement. If we have losing some kind of like, a, for example, some segments, we can reduce the window. So for example, let's say that we agree to send uh, four, five segments. So I'll send five segments before you send acknowledgement. So I'll send, I'll send segment number one, segment number two, number three, number four, and number five. Then the source waits, holds down there before it sends the rest. And it's going to wait for acknowledgement. So acknowledgement has to come from the destination where we send it. And the acknowledgement, acknowledgement usually is this last segment plus one. So it's going to be six. That means that I got all five and send me the next five starting from six. So if we, for example, we have a good delivery, all the data is getting to the destination, we can agree on a much larger segment. So before we agreed on five, we can go and say, okay, well, we, it was fine. So why don't we go for to 10? So now I'm going to send 10 segments before I'm going to wait for acknowledgement from you. And then the next acknowledgement is going to come last segment plus one. Stateful protocol, this tracks the uh, session. Well, UDP was defined in RFC uh, 768, and this is connectionless. UDP does not establish a connection between the host before the data is sent and received. Unreliable delivery, UDP does not provide services to ensure that the data will be delivered reliably. And no order data reconstruction. Occasionally, data is received in a different order that it was sent and no flow control. There is no mechanism within UDP to control the amount of data transmitted by the source to avoid overwhelming the destination device. As you can see here on the right, I can see the, the TCP header and UDP header. And you can see the UDP header is so much smaller than the TCP. We're going to go all the fields one by one very soon on this lesson. Separating multiple communications. So TCP and UDP to manage these simultaneous conversation within varying requirements with varying requirements, the TCP and UDP based services must keep track of various application communications. To differentiate the segments and, diff and the datagrams from each application, both the TCP and UDP have headers fields that can uniquely identify these applications. These unique identifiers are the port numbers. So the Internet Assigned Numbering Authority, IANA, assigns port numbers. We have something known as well known ports well-known port group. So these ports are from number from 0 to 1023. These are numbers are reserved for services and applications. Like for example, we have port numbers, HTTP has port 80, HTTPS has port 443, DNS has 53. All these ports are reserved. They will never change up to 1023. From 1024 to 49,151, these port numbers are assigned to user process or applications. So these are registered ports. For example, if we de develop a new application, we, we need a port number, we have to go and register the port. And then we have a dynamic or private port. These are numbers from 49,152 up to 65,535. These are usually assigned dynamically to client application when the client initiates a connection to a service. So TCP and UDP port addressing. In the header of each segment or datagram, there is a source and destination port. For example, we have a communication between this client and the server. Let's just think that this is a web communication. So we're going to have a user data. And then there's going to be a header. Among other fields that you saw early on on the header, this is going to be a TCP header. We have a destination port and the source port number. And then we have a layer three header, which is destination IP address and source IP address. That's the network layer header. And then we have a data link layer header, which is the source MAC address and destination MAC address. We saw from the previous lessons that that is more on the fields in there than just those numbers. 
and the data link layer will add the frame check sequence. So if you imagine that this is a web communication, this computer initiates the, uh, the communication with the server. And we say, for example, we have some kind of get message. The source port is going to be picked up from the dynamically. So the source port is the number for this communication associated with the originating application on the local host. So the source port is dynamically picked. Destination port is because it's identified that it's HTTP traffic, so it's port 80. So the destination port is the number for this communication associated with the destination application on the remote host. And then we have destination IP address. This is the network layer header. For example, the destination IP address 192.168.1.2. And then we have a source IP address 192.168.1.5. Then we put the source MAC address, which is ourselves, 0 A007, and so on. And then destination MAC address, which is B007, and so on. Then last bit we add is frame check sequence. This is how we identify this is a stream, for, or this is the communication for that web browser or website. For example, if the user opens the same website with all the information is exactly the same, the only thing that would change to be identifying from one browser, from one website to another website from the same server is the source port. Because if you, if you think, let's bring here this one. Like, for example, I'm opening one website, I'm opening a uh, web from here. Now, the source port is going to be 64,000 and destination port is 80, as it's going this way, yeah? It's going this way. Now, when the traffic is returning from the server, is returning to us, the source port is going to be 80 and the destination is 64001. That's the destination. If I open another website, another uh, another page on the same server, for example, I'll open the second page, everything, all the information will be exactly the same. Port 80 again. The only difference is 64002 here, for example. That's going to be the thing that we distinguish one web page from another web page. So when the returning traffic is going to be coming back for the second web page, it's going to have port 80 as a source and destination 64002. So now the transport layer knows, okay, well, that's that's for the first web page and that's for the second web page. If you combination of the transport layer port number and the network layer IP address on the host that uniquely identify a particular application process running on the individual host device, that combination is called a socket. So if we combine the source IP address and the source port number, for example, that's the socket. Destination IP address, destination port number, that's another socket. So we're going to need two sockets for every conversation. Sometimes it is necessary to know which active TCP connections are open and running on the network host. Next that is important network utility that can be used to verify those connections. For example, if we do netstat minus N, we get information about our active connections. Netstat lists the protocol in use, the local address and port number, the foreign address and port number and the connection state. So for example, here we, on the first, we will see uh, TCP or UDP. Then we will see our source IP address. So 192.168.1.101, our source port number. So when the combination of those two, that's called a socket. Foreign destination IP address and destination port number. So that's the second socket. And then the connection state. For example, it could be established, could be wait, time wait, idle, and so on. Unexplained TCP connection can pose a major security threat because they can indicate that something or someone is connecting to the local host. Additionally, unnecessary TCP connection can consume valuable system resources, thus slowing down the host performance. So TCP server process, the key distinction between TCP and UDP, it is reliability. The reliability of TCP communication is obtained through the use of connection-oriented sessions. Before a host using TCP sends data to another host, the TCP initiates a process to create a connection with destination, which you can see it very soon. It's called the three-way handshake. Yeah? After the session has been established and the data transfer begins, the destination sends acknowledgement to the source for the segments that it's received. These acknowledgements form the basis of reliability within the TCP session. So like we say, we have a three-way handshake. 
For example, if you imagine this is a web client and this is a web server. Web client is going to send the first message. This is our three-way handshake. Yeah. So the first message is going to be a synchronization with a sequence of one, for example. This will establish that the destination device is present on the network and the destination device has that port available and it's accepting requests on that port. So for example, port 80, maybe it's not available. Maybe you only need 443 and that this communication will not be successful. And it will inf this will inform the destination that the source client intends to establish the communication session on that port. And then we have a server who's going to reply. Now, if I bring this here, let's have a look. If this was synchronization message with a sequence one. Now, the server is going to send acknowledgement, ACK. ACK is two, which means that I got your sequence one and please send the next ACK uh, or next sequence starting with two. But the server has got its own synchronization message, which says, OK, but my synchronization is 100. So it's two, two way step. That's the client that has sequence of one, while the server has sequence of 100. Now, when the client replies, when the client replies, it will reply with acknowledgement. That acknowledgement is this is 101. So this means that I got you 100. I got you sequence 100. The next one that I want you to send to me is 101. This is the sequence two, which one you re you required or requested. Then when we're done, when we finish this conversation, the TCP te session termination, this closes the connection. The finish of fin control flag must be set in the segment header. To end each one-way TCP session, a two-way handshake is used consisting of fi fin segment and an acknowledgement segment. Therefore, to terminate a single conversation supported by TCP, four exchanges are needed to end both sessions. So as you can see here, we have send fin, Fin received, so send acknowledgement for that fin, ACK received. Send the own fin, and then uh, the client says, yep, I got you finished. TCP reliability and order delivery. So segment segments sequence numbers enable the reliability by indi indicating how to reassemble and reorder received segments. The receiving TCP process places the data from a segment into receiving buffer, and segments are placed in the proper sequence number ordered and passed to the application layer when reassembled. Any segments that arrive with non-contiguous sequence number are held for later processing. So as you can see, the client is sending these segments, one to six. As they go into destination, because each segment can travel independently, they will have IP header and data link header, and they will go independently to the destination. At the destination, they might arrive not ordered. So one, two, six, five, four, three. So six is placed in the end, four is placed between three and five, and there we go, we have the ordered, and then we give it to the application layer. Acknowledgement and window size. So the window size is the amount of data that the source can transmit before acknowledgement must be received. So for example, let's say the acknowledgement is 3000, which means we're gonna send two sec sequences of 1500 bytes each. So I'll send sequence one, I don't wait. I don't wait for acknowledgement. I send the sequence two, so that means three thousand. Then I'll stop. The other so sender will stop, and it will wait for acknowledgement. The acknowledgement number should be three thousand and one, which means I receive the first two sequence. The next sequence should start with three thousand and one. So there you go. The next sequence, the the third and the fourth, and then wait for the acknowledgement. That is the window size of three thousand. So one thousand five hundred bytes each, two segments. When TCP at the source host has not received an acknowledgement after a predetermined am amount of time, it returns to the last act number received and retransmit the data from that point. So for example, just imagine that um, let's just imagine that this this acknowledgement is not coming. It has not arrived at the source uh, at the sender. So sender is he ha has sent those two, but he hasn't received the acknowledgement number. So the source will return here. What has it received? It received 3001. So we'll start sending them two more again, right? Now, if host uh, today might also employ an optional feature called selective acknowledgement or SACS. If both hosts support SACS, it is possible for the destination to acknowledge bytes in discontinuous segments and then the host will only need to retransmit the missing data. So instead of going back to 
lost one you can just go if they support the sacks they can just go and say okay how which one did you didn't receive well, i didn't receive this one from 45 uh, 4501 to 6000 and then the sender will only send that segment tcp flow control flow control helps maintain the reliability of tcp transmission by adjusting the rate the data flow between the source and destination for a given session Flow control is accomplished by limiting the amount of data segment forwarded to one time, at one time and by requiring acknowledgement of recipient prior to sending more. Reducing window size, for example, another way to control the data flow is to use dynamic window size. When networking resources are constrained, TCP can reduce the window size to require that receiving segments be acknowledged more frequently. What this says is like a window in is very, very good. Like, okay, so imagine we agree on 3000 that means i'm going to send two segments one segment one i'll send it to you i'll send segment two to you then i'll stop and then you say okay well i have received both of them great i have received one and two you say okay number three which means you received number one and two and then we can say okay well why don't we go from two from just two segments what do we do we go to maybe 20 segments that says for example when you downloaded something that says uh, two hours to complete that is your two segments and then from 20 segments maybe that goes to 20 minutes to complete you know when you download in something you've seen this before so now instead of just sending two segments i send 20 segments one two three four and so on yeah up to 20 second segments and then i'll stop the next one where you should receive it should be 21 which means you got my 20 segments and 21 but anyway it starts from four and then but i'm just recapping here so if we, for example, then we continue, everything is cool, you received about 20 segments, then I say, oh, well, why don't we just go to 200 segments and try it? And then I say, okay, well, fine. They, that's window wind when we agree on the window size. So we can reduce or we can increase our window size. So 200, then that goes to two minutes to, down, to complete your download. So you're going to keep sending the segments, 200 segments, and I'm going to wait to 201, for example. But maybe 201 is not coming, it's coming 158, which I know that you lost quite a few segments. So then from 200, we say, oh, we lost a few segments. So what can we reduce? We should reduce this to 150 segments, for example. Yeah. And then that goes from two minutes, it goes to four minutes to complete. Because you're reducing and you're increasing the window size, that's why your file transfer will reduce on the, on the time as well, as you see on the computer. When, at one point, they will reach, they will come up to something they, they are comfortable. Okay. That's that's windowing, which is very, very cool, yeah? So here, if we look at the, the header, layer 4 header, the transport layer header. So, for example, in TCP, we have a source and destination port numbers. This will identify the sending and receiving application. Along with the source and destination IP address, we said this was called a socket. So, for example, if we are a client, a web client, the source port will be our dynamic range, while destination port will be from well-known range. Then we have a sequence number, the sequence number of the first data byte in the segment. If the sync bit is set, the sequence number is the initial sequence number, and the first data byte is initial sequence number plus one. And then we have acknowledgement number. If the ag bit is set, the field that contains the value of the next sequence number the sender of the seg segment is expecting to receive. Once a connection is established, this is a always stand. Header length, the number of 32-bit word in the TCP header. This indicates where the data begins. The length of the TCP header is always multiple of 32s. Then we have a flag. So we have, for example, urgent pointer flag, acknowledgement flag, push flag, reset flag, synchronization flag, and fin flag. So urgent, urgent pointer, ACK, the acknowledgement number, push, the receiver should pass this data to the application as soon as possible, reset to reset the TCP connection, synchronization to start the synchronization, and FIN to finish the TCP communication. Window win, so this is the number of bytes starting, the, uh, starting with one specified by acknowledgement number field, and the receiving is willing to accept. This is the 16-bit field, limiting the window size to 65,535 bytes. 
and the checksum this covers both the header and the data this is a mandatory field that must be calculated and stored by the sender and then verified by the receiver so there hasn't been any error on the trans uh, on the trans transmit urgent pointer tcp urgent mode is a way of for the sender to transmit emergency data to the other end this feature is rarely used and you can see the header of UDP. So it's so much smaller, it just has source and destination port length and checksum. Some of the application that can tolerate some data loss. So for example, like DNS, simple network management protocol like SNMP, DHCP, trivial file transfer protocol, IP phones or voice over IP, and online games. For example, if you want speed, but you can tolerate data loss, then UDP is the way to go. So UDP has a use source and destination port like TCP. And then it has a length, the length in byte of the UDP header and the encapsulated data. The minimum value for this field is eight. And the checksum, the designer choose to make the checksum optional to allow implementation to operate with little computational overhead. If the computer, if, if the computer checksum is zero, then the field is zero X F F F F. I'll do a small demonstration for TCP and uh, uh, UDP. So if you need to go to the uh, internet and, and download a uh, Wireshark. So Wireshark. So for example, you go here, you go, you just search for Wireshark and then you can download it and, and uh, install it. So download and install the Wireshark. You choose your own operating system and then you download. You can generate your own capture traffic or you can see some already sample captures and look at them nice and slowly because if you generate your own traffic, it's really fast. Maybe things will move. It will go very fast and you will not see them. So for example, I've got two files here. i got HTTP capture and UDP capture. So if you open the HTTP capture, So that's my HTTP capture. So um, let me move this a little bit this way. And um, these are all the packets. So we first we have, for example, the first is the handshake. The first handshake is the three way. Yeah. So synchronization, this is sequ uh, sequence zero, and then window size 8,660, 8,760. Then we have acknowledgement. So sequence acknowledgement one, I'll acknowledge. I acknowledge that sequence, and my sequence is zero. Anyway, the Wireshark is not always zero than one. The Wireshark is just put this for to stop like man in the middle attack. And then that's the third third handshake. So we have th three way handshake here. TCP. So this communication was was a HTTP traffic. So in the TCP, for example, header, what do we have? Source port, thirty three thousand three hundred seventy two. So they, remember, this is from registered ports. And then well-known port 80, that means it's a web, web traffic. Sequence number is relative sequence number, so they don't show it actually a true sequence number. Acknowledgement number, then we have a header length, it's 20 bytes, and then we have a flags. So here, for example, what we see on this flag, there is acknowledgement being set. So first flag, for example, when we look, is just synchronization flag. And then returning traffic, has got acknowledgement for that sequence uh, for that synchronization and they own synchronization then the client will just synchronize that will acknowledge that will say okay yes i got that and then we have uh, some get traffic um what other information we see here window size and the checksum so let me open the next one we open a udp header So what we have here, we have a source port number, destination port number, checksum, and checksum, and then the data, right? You can download any any other, just to like be familiar with the capture, or you can just capture yourself, all the communication that hap that's happening in your network. All you have to do in the Wireshark, capture, interfaces then you then you look at the interface what interfaces you want to capture okay thank you for watching this section 1.2 compare and contrast tcp and udp protocols please have a look at other videos and don't forget to subscribe this has been Astrid krasnici bye bye